Hey Buns, so with Savage finally out for Endwalker, this is our first Savage tier of the expansion, so it's a really exciting time, and we have so many new players that seem to be asking themselves, do I want to raid in Final Fantasy XIV? What is raiding like in Final Fantasy XIV? How should I raid in Final Fantasy XIV? And I think today I can help you sort of go through these questions. I can't answer them for you, but I can guide you along perhaps on this journey of discovery as you figure out what rating might look like for you in Endwalker. Now, what you find fun, I might not find fun. What I find fun, you may not find fun. We, we might have different styles of approaching this kind of content, uh, but I do try to encourage everybody to at least give it a try. I have met so many people through the channel that I have encouraged to at least try the extreme trials first and see if you like that. If you like that, there's a good chance that you will like rating. And uh, these are people that have been previously quite intimidated by the extreme trials, but with a little bit of encouragement, uh, I've had many, many people come back to me and say, thank you so much for the encouragement. I'm having an amazing time doing the extreme trials. Now I'm not afraid of the hard content. And I really hope that if you're listening and you're worried about it, uh, give it, give it a try, like join a practice group, join a practice from the start group and uh, just see how you feel doing a little harder content if that's not something that you normally do because if you like that if you like the extreme trials then there's a good chance that you will like raiding as well for me i've always gravitated towards raiding in mmos uh, i don't think i ever even asked myself the question of like do I want to raid? Is this right for me? Like, for me, it's like, oh, well, that's where the biggest baddie monsters are. And that's where the shiniest best loot is. So that's where we're going to go. Like, I haven't ever, uh, I guess I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into it. It just seemed that's the natural next step for me as a max level character. Um, but today, I guess, in, in modern MMOs and in Final Fantasy XIV especially, there are, that's not the only step forward you can take after reaching max level. There are many paths for you. It's just that is my personal preferred path, and therefore I tend to encourage other people to at least take a first step down that path and see if you like it. Like, I'll never forget the first time I got my Warblade of Hakari. That was like my first epic piece of loot as a rogue in my vanilla raiding guild long 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 ago and uh, man opening that chest it was like open up the ark of the covenant i was just like oh that's for me <laughs> so uh those are things that i have been hooked on i guess the the rush and the excitement of getting loot and uh killing a boss and uh you know also performing well i'm motivated by that i remember back in those days when i had first passed my uh trial for that raid guild long ago when my guild leader said hey your gear is really bad but your damage is pretty good <laughs> compared to your like considering your gear and to me like that meant so much to me at the time and it was from that moment forward that I was like I will continue to strive to be the best I can with the worst equipment possible <laughs> What I'm saying is it helped me be uh, performance motivated and I started to not only be motivated by loot but also by performance and that's very true today. So these are questions you need to ask yourself too. You know, what's going to motivate you in raiding but maybe these are answers that you will only find through raiding. You may surprise yourself and think that you might not like it and then you end up uh, enjoying it as much as I do. So these are, you know, things to just keep in mind. So if you decide that you do actually want to raid, you should make sure of some things first. Like make sure that you have some decent gear, that you are melded. You know, maybe if you can't afford the best asbestos melds, have something melded in there. So it like, looks like you made an effort, right? Have some kind of food <laughs> and, uh, you know, go to the Balance Discord, read the guides for your job, check the resources there and uh, make sure that you can play. Like, you know how to play your job. You know which buttons to press in the right order. Uh, go to the Stone Sky, see, see if you can kill the dummy there uh, for various fights. And that will go a long, long way in party finder or in finding a static, which is really uh, the next thing that we need to talk about. Do you want to raid in party finder <laughs> or do you want to raid in a static? Now, some people do not have the luxury of choice there. Some people are forced to raid in party finder. And I've been in that situation before, so I feel your pain. Um, it's like pain finder, really. <laughs> the thing is that I, I don't want to completely discount party finder. There is a lot you can do there. And uh, it's possible that you can get quite lucky with a group in there. And everybody has their stuff together. 
and uh, you make a lot of progress and everybody goes home happy, right? Either having killed the boss or having made a lot of progress. And so you feel like, wow, that was a great night. I feel accomplished because I learned so much. You know, that's the ideal situation. But the thing with Party Finder that you, you know, if you spend any time in it, it's a very much like getting matched with people for a group project. And depending on the project, you might be able to get away with not everybody doing everything that they're supposed to do to contribute to the project, right? Uh, there are some projects where that's very hard. You, you do need all hands on deck. And, you know, sometimes you get in a group project and miraculously, the majority of people, maybe all, because that never happens, but majority of people are on board and like, um, know what to do and have studied and are helping. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that doesn't always happen. And, uh, this is actually worse than that because you could get into a, a group like that, an excellent group project, you know, party finder group. Um, but then for whatever reason, you know, not all those people can stay. Like this party finder, people come and go all the time. It's a revolving door and some of those people just might leave. And then you got new people in and every time you get somebody new in, that's a roll of the dice. It's a roll of the dice of whether they know how to play their job, whether they know the fight up to the point that you were trying to learn the fight. And maybe they're just, you know, maybe they're have a bad attitude. You know, you need, that's also a, a variable on every single person that joins. Are, do they have a good attitude? Can they play? Do they know the fight? And uh, there's no real way to guarantee that. And there's always going to be wide variations in skill. Uh, in worst case scenario, you'll find people that are just trying to get a carry, people that lie about how much they know about the fight. And so there's just a lot of things that can end up making Party Finder an incredibly frustrating experience. This is why you'll sometimes see kind of ruthless listings in the Party Finder that's like kick out after one mistake, kick after two wipes. I think these are made by people who are, they have way surpassed the threshold of frustration in Party Finder. These are people that have been suffering for a long, long time with the variability that is natural to happen in Party Finder and for whatever reason are not able to create a static where you can remove much, if not all of that variability and make sure that you get a specific type of player into your group. So first let's talk about some of the positive things, some of the good things about Party Finder. It is obviously an incredible tool for just being able to very quickly, easily, and without any friction at all, jump straight into the high-end content, right? There is uh, no need to set up anything beforehand. You don't need to like form the static and all that stuff. You just jump right in any time of day, especially right now uh, when the tier is fresh. There is so many people in the Party Finder doing this stuff all day, every day. So it's very easy to get into one of these fights. So that's a huge benefit and that cannot be understated, that cannot be overlooked. And that's one of the reasons why many people see Party Finder and think, wow, this is so convenient. This has got to be the most convenient way uh, for me to raid. And they don't even think about, well, maybe there is another way, which we'll talk about. Funnily enough, in my experience, I think that Party Finder excels in situations where I need to either learn the fight from the start, where I need to see like the very beginning, see the like practice from the start, or when I have already cleared the fight and I'm looking for a re-clear or I'm looking to farm that fight. And uh, those are completely polar opposite situations, but because of your ability to set duty complete and make sure you only get other people in the group that have cleared the fight already, that makes a farm quite easy and quite predictable. You know, everybody in here probably uh, does know the whole fight. And so getting a re-clear is usually not too bad. And uh, of course, when it comes to practice from the start, everybody is new or mostly new. There's no pressure, there's no expectation. And so we're all gonna be learning together just by nature of it being the start of the encounter. So I think that, that those are two situations where I think Party Finder excels and has been very helpful to me. Where things start to kind of fall off, however, is when I have learned some of the fight and I would like to go back and pick up where I left off. Uh, that's where the pain begins generally with the party fighter because of course you are going to be matched with people who might not be at the same level of proficiency in the fight as you. They might not have seen as far into the fight as you and there's just no way really uh, to guarantee that. There's not like a first phase complete that you can set on Party Finder. And so a lot of times in my experience raiding through Party Finder, which I did in Stormblood actually uh, for a tier and it was wh horrible, <laughs> like <laughs> full disclosure, I, I hated raiding in Party Finder to the point that I actually did not raid for the rest of the expansion, <laughs> but uh, I did it. I did clear that first tier before I 
gave up. I needed a long break uh, from writing after that. But uh, in my experience, yeah, it often felt like one step forward, two steps back, three steps forward, five steps back, or you get into a really promising group and then we get to the next phase. Like we're, I think we're about to clear and then everybody has to go. Like that was really soul crushing. So um, I, my heart goes out to the people that have to go through that. Uh, it is possible. And uh, I want to reiterate again that at the start of a tier, like right around now, this is the best time to do Party Finder if you're going to go the Party Finder route. I had done Party Finder writing uh, kind of a long time after <laughs> that original Savage content had released. And that might be a problem too. You want to try to do the content if you are gonna do it in Party Finder, you wanna do it closer to when that content first came out because all the best players are going to be doing that soon after it came out. Near the end of that life cycle of that content, like long, it's been a long, long time since that Savage tier came out. The people that are left that still haven't cleared at that point, a lot of times are not gonna be the best players. Uh, like obviously, there's going to be some good players that just happen to be new and they just got to max level, but there are going to be a fair number of people that have been trying to clear this fight for so long. And for whatever reason, they are just not improving at the fight. They are blaming other people. They are not taking responsibility for the problems that they themselves are causing and they're bitter. They're very bitter. I ran into so many people like this uh, near the end of that uh, savage tier cycle, uh, the, life, the <laughs> lifespan of that savage tier. So what I'm saying in short is if you must party finder because you're a shift worker or something like that, try to do it like now, <laughs> like closer to now uh, when this video comes out because right now is when the tier is very fresh and there's gonna be a lot of great players um, that are trying to get their uh, initial clears and there's a lot more leniency in general uh, towards people that are new because so many people are new still to this new tier. Another issue that you might run into with doing party finder rating, and this is something that I experienced when I was playing a red mage at the beginning of Stormblood, if you're on a popular job, um, there might not be a lot of spots for you available in groups. Many groups have one player per job listed, and that means there's not gonna be an open spot for that new popular job. Like that, that spot fills up so quick, so fast. Uh, there were nights I remember pl playing a red mage at the beginning of Stormblood, doing Party Finder rating, uh, when I would just sat in Party Finder for hours and hours and hours and hours. I just could not find a group that was like, had the red mage spot, was up to the point in the fight that I needed to learn. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to lie and say, oh, I'll join this group that's at phase three when I had not got to phase three yet, you know. And uh, that's why some people do lie because they just get tired of waiting. And they're like, oh, well, I'll just join this group that's farther ahead. And that ends up being a disaster for everybody. So you can see many reasons why a static could be a good idea. A static guarantees you a spot. It guarantees you people, the same people that you're learning with together day after day. That knowledge is retained among these people. You can actually pick up where you left off, uh, like come back in and say, oh, well, we'll pick up at phase three. And everybody's like, okay, because we learned phase one and phase two together already. So you eliminate all of so, so much variability that you might experience in Party Finder. If you run the static yourself, if you create your own static, you can also set times that are gonna be convenient for you. You can make sure that all the people have good attitude and are nice. If somebody's being toxic, you can actually remove them from the group and find a replacement. Uh, right now, there are a ton of statics recruiting and it's I created my own static actually for this tier not too long ago, uh, for the whole expansion, <laughs> not just this tier. Obviously, we're gonna continue rating together throughout the expansion. Uh, but I had no problem recruiting people for this static during weird times as well. I mean, I raid during the daytime, I stream during the daytime. So that's another reason why uh, it was really important for me to create my own group so I could 
fit my most convenient times. I also created a static when I had first gotten to level 60 in Heavensward, that was max level at the time in this game. Uh, I immediately formed a static. Like as soon as I got to max level, I created a static even though I was very casual and I was not very good at the game at the time. It was easy for me to create a static then. That was before YouTube, that was before streaming. So nobody knew like, who I was at the time. And I remember it not being difficult at all to put a static together. So uh, if I can do it, you absolutely can do that too. What I'm saying is that raiding with a static will save you a lot of time compared to raiding with the party finder. And it also has the added benefit of you getting to know people. You'll make some long-term friends. Like it's, it's impossible not to become friends with at least some of the people that you are in a static with because you're gonna be seeing each other regularly and you're gonna be sharing goals of clearing this content together. You'll be forced to communicate about things that are happening in the fight. And uh, you'll, to me, that's some of the most enjoyable parts of raiding. Now, if you've decided that, yes, I want to join a static or I want to create a static, I would recommend that you look at the local data center Discord for you. So you need to find your data center Discord or if you have it, your data center's rating Discord. There might be both. Uh, I would check the various server listings channel in the balance Discord. There's a lot of channels listed there, a lot of uh, Discord servers there. So check your data center and try to find that data center discord or data center rating discord check the recruitment channels there and that is where you're going to find everybody looking for probably your job or you can create your own listings of course so while you're looking for a group you might find that different groups identify as either casual or mid-core or hardcore and what does that mean I th there are really two dimensions to these different categories so I think the most helpful way to think about this is in terms of time spent weekly. A casual group will spend like three to five hours a week, maybe a bit more. A mid-core or a semi-hardcore group will spend between like, I don't know, eight hours to around 15 hours. And a hardcore group will spend, you know, at least 15 hours, maybe up to 30 hours during the first week. Maybe during the first week of Savage being out, they would raid for like 10, 12 hours a day, like as much time as possible. Like this is hardcore, but I mean, look, if you're looking for a hardcore group, you don't need this video. Like, you know, you're, you're a hardcore player already. You don't need my help. I find myself preferring semi-hardcore groups. I try to raid as much as possible within the time constraints that I personally have. Um, but there is the other dimension to this, which is the attitude towards progression. What is your mentality about progression? And I'm talking about this now because it's actually really important for you to figure this out before you create a static. If you don't know at all what you want, then you should join probably a casual group and you know, if you join though, that is a little bit of a commitment. Like you need to stay with them for this tier. And through that experience, you will determine, you will decide for yourself, well, did I like raiding that much? Do I want to raid more? Um, did I like this attitude or do I want a more serious attitude? Now, this is where it gets blurry. And this is why like, I, I tend to prefer talking about uh, casual, midcore, hardcore in terms of time spent per week, because it gets really messy when you try to categorize, oh, every casual static has a casual attitude and every mid-core static has a more serious attitude because that is not the case at all. Uh, it, it's really, there can be excellent players that are very serious about progression that might find themselves in a casual group that has you know five hours a week just because this person is extremely limited on time. They, they're just really busy in their day-to-day -day life and they just don't have the time to put into a more serious-minded, serious time investment group, right? But aside from those cases, the casual mentality usually is not so focused on getting the clears done to the like to the best like do the best job that we can on this boss it's more like oh we had fun together and we killed this boss in our own time and a clear is a clear it doesn't matter if like we all did our best performance on this clear because we had fun and uh that's okay like if, if you're having fun and everybody else in the group is having fun then there's there's nothing to be faulted with this a lot of people are really pretentious about it and say you know it's not okay to play the game in that way but the point of the game is to have fun if you're having fun then you won the game okay uh, but you do need to kind of nail down for yourself what kind of mentality do you want to take so i think there is a distinction that you need to draw between how many hours a week do i want to raid and how seriously do i want to take the progression because if you put a 
progression minded, performance minded, you know, I'm trying to get the most damage out of my job. I want to perform the best my ability person in a group that has more of a casual mindset. If you put someone like that in a group like that, uh, they're not going to have a good time, most likely. And it's going to end up ruining that vibe for everyone else. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of a vibe do I want to join? What kind of vibe do I want to create? And I think either one of those vibes <laughs> is fine. Uh, but you need everyone to agree. You need everybody on the same page about what kind of mindset you want to take towards progression. Like, do you want people to study the fight beforehand? Do you want them to have their food and their potions ready? Do you want them to be like, you know, making sure that they are doing the absolute best that they can possibly do every single time? Um, what kind of rate do you want to get these bosses down? How quickly do you want to clear this tier? For me, actually, I think this is something that has evolved uh, over time. I think in Shadowbringers, um, I was I had more of a casual mindset about rating, but as I got more confident with my job, as I got more confident with rating in general, and I learned more about optimization, I started to have more and more fun doing those kinds of optimizations, and uh, I. I started to enjoy the more serious side of rating more and serious makes it sound like it's not fun. That's why like, I don't like to say, Oh, these people have fun and these people don't have fun because it's not true at all. Like I'm having the time of my life right now. Uh, and I would say probably a semi hardcore group, but everyone is, uh, very highly motivated to improve, highly motivated to do the best possible job that we can do together. And, uh, if we clear and there was a lot of wipes and it was messy, like n generally not too happy with that. And uh, that's that's what where I feel most comfortable, I think, now. So this is something that you'll need to figure out for yourself, maybe through just getting in there, getting in there, giving it a shot and see what you like, see what you don't like. I think that's actually one of the reasons why there can often be so much hostility and friction in the party finder. It's just that you have all these different players and they all have their own different mindsets and approaches to the game, their own preferred styles of play and high-end content. And they're all thrown in there together randomly and maybe you'll be matched with people that are more like your style of play and maybe you'll be matched with people that are totally unlike your style of play. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I encourage you to look for a static where everybody is in agreement about what they want to get out of the raid and how they want to approach it. If you've had some bad party finder experiences, like I want to assure you that there is another way to do this. Like honestly, I think even having a partial static and then filling in people from party finder, you're going to have a much better time than just doing party finder all on your lonesome. You know what I'm saying? Uh, give you a little bit more control over this situation. And who knows, maybe some of those random people that you pick up will end up becoming permanent members of your group, right? Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free just by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow adventurers. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.